all set. Great. Uh, so welcome everybody to the new normal. Um, so we are also just uh, off the top um, taking a new tack and we're looking to produce these or start producing them as, as uh, web episodes. Um, so you'll be able to interact with them that way and, and be sure to follow us and keep track of the episodes as they come out. Uh, so the new normal is a collaboration between Jet Propelled, uh, and we have Brad Dean, of course, from Jet Propelled, and Commotion, uh, myself from Commotion Spaces. Uh, as a background, the new normal started back in spring 2020, uh, as the world was kind of entering into the pandemic, and we wanted to talk about basically what to expect out of the new normal as it comes through, uh, whether it was trends, whether it was business developments or small business developments, mental health, um, and basically how to deal with things. That was 2020 and we're coming up on nearly a year now, which is terrifying and nightmarish. Um, and speaking of terrifying and nightmarish, as we've gone on, we've also seen how the pandemic has begun to wear down on, on sort of all of us. So in the fall, we decided to take the tack of uh, changing format also a little bit more to focus a bit more on mental health and personal and, and mental well being as we kind of go forward in this. And especially as we go into the winter and uh, at least in Ontario, sunny warm Ontario um, as things look like another potential lockdown uh, wanting to talk about just how we we keep care of ourselves and, and each other as we go into this um, so yeah that's the new normal and uh, Brad if you'd like to introduce our guest today perfect okay we're uh, we're very excited to introduce our uh, our very special guest uh, for this uh, first episode first session where we are transitioning to this different format uh, this is a, uh, a, a great guy in the community who is uh, a fantastic business owner, uh, leading by example and, and taking that to, to the nth degree, uh, and somebody who I've actually been uh, looking forward to having a conversation with for a long time. So uh, we are welcoming Daniel Guest from Guest Plumbing. Uh, Daniel Guest is the president of Guest Plumbing and Heating, which provides services for both commercial and residential clients throughout the greater Hamilton area. Uh, Daniel started his career as an apprentice and worked as a licensed plumber before starting his own company. Uh, now, since its inception in 2015, Guest Plumbing and Heating has seen significant growth and established itself as a valuable part of the construction industry in our, in our area. Uh, as a Mohawk College grad, born and raised in Hamilton, uh, Daniel is passionate about his local business community and continues to give back wherever he can. Uh, he's been recognized by the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce as a young entrepreneur in 2017 and was named to the Fast 40 Under 40 in both 2018 and 2019, which is quite an accomplishment. Uh, these days, you can also find Daniel connecting with local, local entrepreneurs in his podcast, Guest Life. Uh, thank you so much for coming on with us today, uh, Daniel. It's a pleasure. Like I said, I've been, I've been looking forward to having a conversation with you for a long time. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be involved with such a, you know, such strong, uh, strong names in our community, especially um, with Ryan and yourself. Like, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm mean, going to look forward to it. Very cool. Uh, so I want to, so we, we, like I said, we're transitioning our format a little bit here. Uh, usually we would do sort of a, a quick uh, uh, guest bio introduction and then move on to the other panelists move on to the other panelists and kind of split that time. But uh, because we have, uh, we have you all to ourselves, uh, I, I'm going to dive in just a, a little bit more uh, and, and wanted to ask you a few uh, sort of fun questions just to get, get to know you, get to know your business a little bit more. Uh, first off, so... Uh, and this is a write-in question. Uh, uh, the inspiration for your comp company logo, Marley's Leafs, what are we doing here? So uh, ca Canada, actually. Canada and water. So we actually, um, we connected, uh, it's an image of a pool that I had to purchase. So the yeah. high-res digital is, is actually uh, like water in a pool, so the bottom of the blue in the pool, and then a Canadian maple leaf. So yeah. I am a Leafs fan, but I always tell people I won't fight you about it. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're a Habs fan, so not, not going to throw hands, but, but yeah, so that was kind of the inspiration. So if you look at, um, if you Google plumbing logos, it's almost hysterical what comes up and then you showcase that with like the, the companies that are within the city, not all of them, but a lot of them. And it's like, they just handpicked which one they were going to do. Um, so I was like, I need to create a logo that's completely offside from the norm. Um, and then I also use the basis of Apple. So like when you see the Apple logo, it's simple simplicity, um, but you know what they do. Um, so we wanted to eventually 
you know, get to a brand status where uh, you just see the leaf and, and you know who to call. Yeah. I like yeah. it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it's uh, certainly visible. I mean, um, I used to work in Niagara. So driving up and down the highway to and from work, did right there. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. That's what we yeah. always say, say to people. They're like, oh, I see you everywhere. I was like, no, you saw us once. And, and now we've we've done our job. We've been, we've instilled in your brain. Yeah, <laughs> you really have. I've actually. It, it's it's funny. Your ears must have been burning a few times because I've actually talked about your company specifically and the job, the, the great job that you guys have done in branding to a oh, bunch you. of other people. Uh, so you know, coming from uh, you know us being a, a marketing agency primarily. Actually, I joke that we're a community initiative agency with uh, with a marketing habit, but. Uh, in talking to other people about, you know, this is what a good job looks like. This is what, you know, needs some work. You know, I've, I've brought up guest plumbing a few times, uh, guest plumbing and heating uh, a few times. Um, and, and the sort of rhetoric that I put forward is, uh, is that you've started a really successful marketing company with a, with a plumbing service, right? Every company, is, every company should be a marketing company first, um, you know. If you, if you're not, a, if it doesn't matter if you, you know, you, you've cured cancer, if no one knows about it and no one can find you, it's, it's you know, it's very selfish of you. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, you know, if you want to give back to the community and, and, and the world with whatever service you offer, you got to market it. So yeah, we, we take that like really wholeheartedly. Um, again, we're plumbers and, you know, we, we just started an, we launched an HVAC company during the pandemic actually. And, uh, you know, we say, how do we make plumbing sexy? So yeah. that's kind of where we showcase, like, it's, it's our, it's our mantra in the sense of like, you know, is the customer going to want to see that or, you know, hear about that? Or, or is it the, the fact that maybe we're like too much in our own head? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, the, the water specialist talking about water purification, you just want a glass of water. Mm. Yeah. Well, you've, you've done a great job, uh, you know, and specifically like I, I've worked with, uh, with clients that are in the trades industry specifically. And, sure. you know, one of the biggest hills to climb in that industry specifically is uh, uh, the sort of reputation of the trades industry being, you know, uh, uh, people showing up with dented trucks and, you know, smoking out on people's property and all that kind of thing. And in, with the other clients that I've, I've worked with, uh, you know, that's the first thing they want to do is like, we need to clean up this, this image of this industry and we need to make it safe for elderly people and for, you know, young single women and for everybody across the board to feel like when they call us, they, they might as well be calling Disney, you know, and they, they know that we're coming in, we're professional, we're going to get it done. We're, you know, we're putting on the right equipment and we're being polite and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think that the image that you've, uh, you've worked very hard to build up um, sort of precedes any of, of your people going out to the job site so well done mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you so much yeah we yeah. we strive for it right like we always yeah. say uh when we're once we interview a guy we always try to check on his car because if his yeah. car is dirty it means my van's going to be dirty which means the job's going to be dirty so yeah uh, it all matters little trick, tricks of the trade yeah every business yeah, is, a, is a marketing company i like it that's it um so off, off topic from that a little bit, uh, digging into like the real dirt here. Yeah. You go to Aberdeen Tavern uh, and you order something. How, how do you find their takeout menu during the pandemic as opposed to pre-pandemic menu? I'm just like, we, so we lost guest, guest eats. So I've been um, supporting the community by trying all the restaurants that we serve. And so, yeah, I think like, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian now, so I, I'm um, the the menu shrunk a little bit, but it's so good. Like yeah. getting mm -hmm. a scone from there, oh, it's, it's yeah, magical. They're fresh, they're ready to go. They serve it at the door. Let it go. Away we go. <laughs> who who would have thought? Like even you know six seven years ago, Hamilton, Ontario, world class food scene. You know, it's 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 incredible. The chefs that have come into the city um that are being also built here like you know it's not outside chefs coming in but you know people getting known and, and showcase and you know from chima with pizza to you know thai to new sushi spots opening up um hamburger like mm -hmm. oh, it's 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 unreal we've got the, um, a good friend of mine matt cowan owns uh, the heather down on barton street it's just 
the food is incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's hope, um, let's hope they all come out alive. Yeah. Um, that's the, the yeah. big uh, concern. Yeah. Well, that's where, that's one of the reasons we launched guest eats, which, which is, um, for us, it's a, it's pretty much a showcase of the, some of the restaurants that have supported us over the years and given us their business. We wanted to mm-hmm. kind of, you know, use our platform on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn to showcase them in any way that we can, which is just like, you know, how to get a hold of them, what they're on, if it's Uber Eats or Skip the Dishes and a and little bit of their menu, because it's just, it's so unfortunate, but I think they're doing such a great job at kind of weathering the storm the best that they can. Um, yeah. And yeah, just getting the word out. I mean, the other thing is you need people with money to order the food. And, yeah. you know, like as much as they're they're diversifying, the not everybody's finances are there to be spending money on Uber Eats. And, uh, yeah. And then there's the, I mean, the, the challenge of some of those delivery services too, taking their own kind of bite out of, out of that pie. Um, yeah. And I know speaking of pie, my pie, uh, which just opened up, almost before the pandemic came down. They, so uh, good. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that too. fantastic. But they've been uh, involved in actually building out kind of a new app, the Curbside Pivot, to um, help kind of put a bit more power into the, the restaurant owners as well, um, encouraging people to come pick it up uh, rather than have it delivered. So it kind of removes yeah. that commission, I guess. Yeah. Well, and like, you know, you can't fault Uber for creating... Yeah. I always say like when you look at a business, especially as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you cannot fault someone for being successful. Um, yep. You know, uh, creating a, thank God for Uber Eats in a lot mm-hmm. of places, right? Like yeah. um, people that, uh, that don't have a car, can't travel or, you know, have to take public transit are now able to, you know, get food delivered right to their door. Yes. It's more expensive, but there's a, there's a fee for that. And yep. just, in the, I always think yeah. like, I'm not in the tech space, but we are in a, like, um, a paperless company mm-hmm. and thinking of like some of these companies that have so much back end work, like just imagine the payment processes and the advertising and all that stuff that's associated with like Uber or skip the dishes in terms of a kind of a concept like that. I think it's, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I think some restaurants are, I know the the big thing is all the big companies are taking the 30%, but like, you know, what kind of margins do you guys run on in your business? Mm-hmm. Right. And how much is a food order? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's all, it's all scalable, but uh, yeah, we, we look at like all types of businesses and, and just be grateful that they're able to succeed and strive and, and you know. prop each other up. Right. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where we can. We're all in this together, literally, you know, yeah. uh, we, we've, we've spoken uh, a few times in, in past sessions about, uh, specifically about the uh, hospitality industry in Hamilton and how creative uh, they've been and, and how they've been able to work together, combine together. You know, s- some, you know, uh, bakeries have hooked up with restaurants and they're offering combined package deals and all this other cool stuff. Uh, and and they, so the, the restaurant hospitality industry has done a really good job of pivoting. Uh, and, and going back to you, it, it, it sounds to me like you did a little bit of pivoting early on in your career as well. You were, you were originally looking at getting into legal accounting and then what, what changed, what changed your, your path from there? Yeah, just <laughs> not good at school. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, you know, I was, I, that's always what I wanted to do. Um, my family's very, uh, universe, like I was the only one that didn't go to university. Um, so yeah, I just never, I, I just couldn't focus at school. Um, not very interested and didn't have, definitely didn't have the grades. Um, so now, yeah, just kind of finding like a comfort zone. Like I never, I always look at it from an entrepreneurial standpoint is like, I never knew, uh, I could be so excited for Monday on a Sunday, <laughs> you know, That's I could, a good I ne- I ne- yeah, I never knew like you know, people are like, oh, it's Friday. Thank God. Like, I don't, I don't want it to be Friday. That's two days away from Monday. I want Monday. Where's my Monday? Yeah. Um, you know, I am single and don't have a family. So it's a little bit different. I'm not, you know, excited to go home and see my kids. Um, I, my kids, my kids, I call them my employees. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's pivoting at, at, the, at those aspects. Like, you know, I do a lot of reflection and we talk about mindset Um something came up the other day which is my old office a photo of it i posted on linkedin and it was like if you ask my you know when you talk about projections and planning 
if, if someone asked you, where do you think you'll be in five years and you start thinking about it and it's, you kind of start thinking about the possibilities. Well, what if you said, reflect on the last five years, do you think five years ago you'd be where you were today? Mm. And, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs have, would have no, like I couldn't have dreamt this in my wildest dreams. Um, so then you start thinking, wow, I should plan bigger. Yeah. Right. And start creating those, those, uh, you know, those bigger goals that, you know, might seem completely unattainable, but, you know, become attainable because you've put that on the, in the universe kind of thing. And, uh, you know, you've thought that it is possible. So it created, so it's helped me in terms of strategizing and, and pivoting and, you know, why, you know, Oh, that sounds crazy. It's like, well, if you tell, I always say, if I tell 10 people something and nine of them say it's crazy, it's probably a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, All right. So that's, it's some of the it's some of the mantras I go, I go by right now. It's just 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 keeping a positive mindset and kind of thinking outside the box and saying, you know what, let's let's dive into that a little bit deeper. Um, let's compartmentalize that a little bit and you know give it give it some water and and, and plant the flowers. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. love it. You're not you're not going to get there if you if you don't put it out there, right? Wait, yeah. I just we just had our annual planning meeting with uh, my operations specialist uh, Jacqueline, and uh, she's really good at uh constantly pushing and reminding me that we need to we need to make stretch goals you know like what's our realistic goal have that in mind and maybe push that a little bit so that we can we can work for it um but then you know what's our pie in the sky what's uh you know what's that cool crazy stretch goal that we could do in the next year two years three years whatever it is and Mm -hmm. put some stuff into play and see what happens you know yeah yeah i'm wondering um I mean, you kind of talked about the past five years and then kind of the recent history. I feel like everyone kind of has developed their 2020 story, um, both personally and maybe professionally. Um, I mean, I know, I know Brad and I can certainly speak to pretty rich ones, I think. Um, So I guess, yeah, between both the personal and professional and and we can deal with whichever order you want to go in, but what, what would be your 2020 story? Um, Maybe personally and then professionally. In the best they year I've could also had. weave so yeah best 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 year hands down i've ever had um <laughs> yeah i um so we launched um it's you know a little bit premature but again it, it, things happen for a reason and forceful so um mm-hmm. we are in a space right now where we sh- we we did share as of january 1st the whole building's ours now so we launched uh, guest heating and air conditioning mm-hmm. um so it's been a project that i've been working on for about two years where we subcontract um, HVAC, which is, you know, uh, furnaces and air conditioners, um, out to a couple of other, um, companies and we just launched it. So we, we brought it in house, which is just like, you know, we'll be one of the newer companies in the city to do it. And we want to be, um, you know, just, just servicing our customers better, which mm. is so important to us. Like, you know, they call us for it anyway. Why don't we just keep it in house so we can keep the quality up and keep the standards up. So I started, we started that business, which is, phenomenal um to get it off the ground at such an early stage and again it, it, this was a great year to give us time to do that um i started an investment company um it's called maplewood capital with with some partners which has been um we do, we do uh long-term rentals which hmm. has been amazing you know again working through that and creating it as a business and a platform which has been awesome working with some great people um especially within the city um we did uh, four charitable, uh, like kind of, I don't even know what to call organizations. We, we didn't, we just organized them. So I always say like, you can't do, uh, you can't run some, something to do with charity without the community. So we did, um, one of, uh, a friends of ours that own a, uh, like a tailoring company, a custom suit company, they did a shirt off your back challenge. Um, so we collected dress shirts for the community and they, they made, made them into masks which was amazing. We did a food drive um, for the YWCA. Um, we did a coat drive. Uh, we just did a toy drive. Like it was, uh, it was a phenomenal year, just kind of yeah. coming together as a community. Mm-hmm. Um, per- personally, um, I was telling Brad before uh, when COVID struck, it was really, really challenging. I had two weeks of just depression and anxiety and all, all of the all those platforms above, but then Mm -hmm. just, I woke up one Sunday morning and and I I was very fortunate that it only took two weeks, but I said, you know, you know, I have a daily routine of, you know, gym office, 
kind of go through all my just that's what it does so um mm-hmm. yeah personally it was very forceful to kind of make a big change in my life i read my first book this year i've never read a book before which is sounds embarrassing as an adult but no i yeah, actually I never... I saw that post and on linkedin and i remember reading that and that was awesome and both a, a very awesome ad- admission too but also like in it, i don't think it's embarrassing at all i think it's it's really cool and cool to yeah. get out there with that yeah yeah thanks man yeah it was um it was big for me i used to make a lot of excuses i used to mm-hmm. just I used to make it like a joke. I'd say, I don't read people, you know, as an entrepreneur, say, people would be like, oh, what are you reading right now? Of course you're reading. And uh, I would just sit, you know, laugh it off and be like, oh, I don't read good and, and say, I listen to podcasts. But it was really because my insecurities that I've never read and I didn't, I didn't think I'd be capable of focusing on a book. Mm. And um, yeah, a good friend of mine who I had on my podcast, Jordan McCarter, bought me a book and, and said, you know, you got me into podcasts. Why don't I get you into reading? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, I made the decision to agree to it. And big thing in my, my life is I don't say I'm going to try. Yeah. I, yeah. A, I'm either going to, I'm either going to do it or I'm going to say no. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I do everything either. Um, but I, I try not to, um, to use the word try because it gives your, you know, gives your head space a little bit easier, you know, little L gives you, so, an L. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it gives you no, no, I tried. No. Yeah. So when you're when you're saying that you try at the beginning of a problem or beginning of an opportunity, it's it's kind of like ah well, if you if you fail, you tried. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I read my first book, which was called Range by David Epstein, which was amazing. Um, really sat well with me, which is just kind of a, a you know a flow through of specialization versus generalization. So they talk about like Tiger Woods being you know starting golf at age two and. Uh, Roger Federer starting uh, tennis at 20 or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, they're both absolute weapons. And, you know, there's a bunch of different stories within the book, which was awesome. And then um, now I'm on my third book. I'm almost done. So great. Been, That's awesome. It's been, yeah, it's been great. And like, I'm really enjoying it and getting, getting full. We launched the podcast this year. Yeah. I'm going to have a great year. Great. Absolutely great year. That's Thanks. good to hear. I, I like the, the comment about reading too, because it's also like, I think it, it, I would be weirded out by someone who says like, oh, I read great. Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> like, what do you get from it? No. I mean, I, I read a lot personally, but I'm a terrible reader. Like I, I, I'm pretty slow and I also like will get bored with something. So I mean, like my wife can attest that on my bedside table, there's a stack of about eight books, which makes yeah. me look smart. But no, it, it's a complete lack of focus because I'll be like, oh, no, I want this one instead. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm huge with that. So um, I actually picked up meditation this year as well. Um, nice. And as I'm, I'm reading a book right now that talks about meditation and breathing. And I think like, I'm sure you guys get this a lot, but you'll be reading something. You'd be like, I didn't hear a word that that was read. Like <laughs> you, either you're talking to someone, you're like, I didn't hear what you said. Or you're yeah. reading something like, I don't know what I just read. Or reread so, the same line like two or three times and then go, yeah. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like, I've, and I've had a ton of tips, like, you know, putting out that, that LinkedIn post. I got a ton of people contacting me about like quicker ways to read, which mm-hmm. I thought, which was, was helpful and great. But I was like, I don't, the, the goal is not to finish a book in an hour and a half. Yeah. Like by, you know, listening to an audible while reading the book. Mm-hmm. For me, the, the goal is the act of reading and, and the act of being present and putting my phone away and, and, you know, turn distractions off. Mm-hmm. And I found it really, really helpful. And, and also um, it was controlling of time. If that makes sense, like you could control time more where sometimes when you're working and you're dialed in, you're, you you don't control time. You're, you're always looking for more time. Whereas I felt when I had my phone off and I was dialed into a book, you know, I, I knew I could read a, a chapter in 45 minutes or an hour, mm-hmm. you know, be present, which I, I found this uh, pandemic is, is allowed me to kind of be more present. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think from a, as a takeaway, that's one of the things I really want to focus on is, being more, uh, being more present. And I, it's a difference between multitasking because as entrepreneurs, the word multitasking is, is a good thing and it can also be a bad thing. Um, so I've kind of changed that to compartmentalizing. 
-hmm. So like as entrepreneurs, we have hundreds of things going on all the time, but we don't need them all going on at the same time. So, Mm -hmm. you know, do one, get it a hundred percent or get it to the point where it needs to be and then go do the other thing rather than having six different tabs open and kind of doing everything. Yeah. Um, It was one of the biggest takeaways from this year. Just working on, you know, the difference between being busy and being productive. Yeah. Yeah. In in a lot of ways, uh, you know, entrepreneurs just to, just to survive and keep your head above water, you lean on your autopilot a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you, you get so many things to a state where you don't have to be present with them so that you can operate that in the background while you're doing this other thing. Right. And really, you know, it's sort of backwards from where we should be, right. We should be planning things out more strategically providing space and time so that we can be present with the thing that we're working on and care about it. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really interesting. W- one of the points that you brought up earlier <clears throat> uh, was that the, the, the uh, year in the pandemic gave you time to sort of revisit and reassess some of these things. We've talked about this a few times as well. Like that, you know, uh, it, it seems like under normal circumstances, you know, you, you're, you're born, then you go to kindergarten, then you go to grade school, then you go to high school and, you know, maybe trade school or college or whatever, then you get a job. And everybody has this sort of hamster wheel framework for how a day goes, when you eat, mm. when you learn, when you work, you know, all these different things. Then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and this hamster wheel that every, everybody's been on comes to a screeching halt. And then you have, you know, a, a, a large, uh, substantial group of people who are dying for that hamster wheel to start up again because they don't have any distractions and they're not particularly happy with what's going on. They need that hamster wheel to start back up so that they, they don't have to think outside of that. And then you have this other group of people that this hamster wheel comes to a screeching halt and they go, oh shit, I don't have to live like that. In fact, we're not allowed to live like that right now. There's other opportunities. There's other things I can do. Like, you know, for, for me personally, it was an incredible gift uh, to have that time to say, oh shit, I can take my head out of the sand and look around and see if I need to change anything. Maybe I'm not the happiest. Maybe I'm not where I should be. Maybe I'm not giving back as much as I should be. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't mind talking through like tangibly, like what, are, what were the signs that you saw that, that you know, told you to, to look around and say, hey, you know, the, these two, last two weeks were really tough to deal with, but like, you know, like you said, before we, we jumped on, um, having that perspective of it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. Can you talk through some of the, the, the tangible things that you, you saw and recognized and went through? Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's a great point to come back to. I think, um, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts on, on service and servants. I don't love the word being a servant. Um, but I do love talking about being for, in service for people. Um, because as entrepreneurs and leaders, we are constantly serving other people. And, you know, again, I'm not a parent and I'm not a husband, but, um, I, I, I serve a lot of people in a day and the way I serve people and servicing people, um, affects a lot of different people and a lot of different bodies and a lot of personalities and a lot of emotions that come through. So if I'm not in the right state of mind to service the people that, that I directly service, and then they go out and they spread like, you know, kind of the spider web effect, um, it's not helping anybody. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I identified in the first two weeks is the things that I were doing that I was doing for me before prior to the pandemic, because of the limitations I could not do. So I don't read the, like, I don't read the news and I don't, you know, watch TV. Um, don't really watch sports. Uh, and so I wasn't really aware because most of my days are meetings and follow-ups and, 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 and planning and, and vision stuff where when the pandemic hit, I, I was sitting in my office, every single meeting I had canceled every lunch, every coffee, every zoom call, whatever it was, would canceled immediately. And everybody turned to me and was like, what are we doing, Dan? Like, can we go into work? Can we work from home? Like we're plumbers. How do you work from home? You can't do that. And, and I was just trying to keep the lights on. So, I was sitting in my office feeling obligated to watch the news. Mm -hmm. It was literally so uncomfortable um, sitting here like, how are we going to do this? Who am I going to let go? How is it going to happen? And then I'd have to go home and I'd watch the news for six hours. And I couldn't go to the gym. So I stopped working out. So my morning routine was completely shot. So my time for me was gone. Um, And, and then when I woke up on that Sunday, I was like, what am, what is like, I went from happy and and motivated because we were on 
we were having our best month ever um, prior. And again, it's not saying that's uncommon, but in business, you're constantly getting better. So like having your best, best month ever in a new business isn't like, it's not wild. You know what I mean? You're just, you should always be growing in, in the stage that I'm at. So yeah, I was like, what am I doing differently? And when I identified, like I'm watching the news and nothing's changing. What, you know, it's important as a business owner to get the information for, for health purposes, for sure. And, you know, especially finances, but I don't need to get it from the news, get it from my accountant. Mm -hmm. So changing that. So I completely, literally Sunday, I've made the decision to stop watching the news. Um, and then I started focusing on me and what services me better. Um, so that's when I made the decision that, you know, I was fortunate enough. A, a friend of mine has an office, uh, office gym. So I've been going to his gym in the mornings, which is, you know, it's a private gym for myself pretty much. Um, so made the change for that. And then just, yeah, got into servicing me first. What do I need? And when I'm, you know, good, which is even if it's 10 minutes. So I started meditating, taking, you know, 10, 20 minutes a day meditating and I don't know how to meditate properly. So I do, you know, a YouTube, a guided meditation every morning and it's lovely, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting completely out of my comfort zone. Um, also like discussing with like-minded people, like the two of you, like, Hey guys, what are you, what's going on? How's it going? And, and I would actually hang up the phone if people started like negative conversation. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Would you um, just cut yeah. it and hang up or cut would you it. say bye? Yeah. <laughs> no. You know what? Like, it, it's, you know what? It's too. It's too much when you answer the phone. Yeah. Oh man, this sucks. Or the, it's no. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Not back, here. To, going back. Not to here your... to hear, to listen to your venting. Like it's, it's, I can't. It's not that I'm not here for you, but I need to be here for people that are gonna try. Right. Yeah, right. Vent to somebody else. Can't. Yeah. yeah. And that's where like the word selfish is can be so misconstrued, but. I started using it and I, you know, I, I write in a daily planner. Um, and the first part of this daily planner is very personal. Uh, it, it's, it's not business. It's, you know, what, the first thing it asks you is when I feel like giving up, I would tell myself X and mm -hmm. I get to write it in first thing in the morning, every day when I'm nothing's happened yet. Right. So those words to myself are positive. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's the, that was the biggest kind of, you know, decision that I had to make, which was hard, but also like required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, positive or negative thoughts, you know, are similar to, uh, you know, healthy and unhealthy nutrition, right? Like, I mean, if you have your morning workout routine and you fill yourself full of McDonald's before you go work out, you're going to have a hard time. You know, and if you yeah. sit on a conversation with somebody who's trying to find the negative spin on everything, and then you have to go and set an example for a team of people uh, and for yourself, you're going to have a hard time, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be able to surround yourself, like you said, with people who are at least trying, you know, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah, Every single day, tons of negative things happen in my, in my life, right? And tons mm -hmm. of positive things happen. And I choose to, I choose to focus on the positive and like, yeah. and, ma and manage and prioritize the challenges. Right. So one of the things that like, you know, the doctor's probably going to kibosh me for this, but I don't, I, I started not using words that I didn't like. So changing the meaning. So I like, everyone says, Oh, it's stressful. So I don't say stressful anymore. I say challenging um, yeah. because you can overcome a challenge. You can't overcome stress in like, you know, in simple terms um and and everything in business can be stressful or classified as stressful mm -hmm. oh we got this new contract that's so stressful i gotta deal with it now no it's challenging and like for me it's a challenge accepted come on bring them on yeah. so yeah I, st I stopped using the word stress altogether um because at the beginning of, well again in business as you guys know everything can be stressful mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> But yeah. like you, you could, but you, you know, again, talking about it, you're constantly adding stress to your life, which is no, you're adding challenges. And as business owners, like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I can't sit here and not have a challenge on my desk. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm seeking challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. you know, come on, bring it on. Like, you know, if, if when things get easy is when I start throwing wrenches and, and like, it's, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's what that else idea of I, discomfort that, 
I mean, you can thrive on discomfort and it's comfort that actually agitates you and gets you a little bit uh, <laughs> iffy, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly stretching and, and, you know, pushing, pushing boundaries and pushing what's possible. And when you find that group of people that you can kind of open up and you can tell them your deepest and, you know, most ridiculous aspirations. And they're like, yeah, I could see that. Or they're mm. like, you know, I call them unicorns. Right. So um, I, I use a different term uh, in terms of like classifying people. So I'll, I'll let you guys in on my secret. So there's three types of people. So number one is, is friends and family. So as a business owner and entrepreneur, you're, you know, they're super important. They're supportive. They're always going to be there for you, but they're never going to push you to potential failure because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we want to succeed to a very you know high standard. So they're not going to push you out of a place where you're doing well, but you know, it's, it's high risk because they, they just don't want to see you fail. So those mm -hmm. are the number, number one, right? So friends and family are usually classified at number one. Uh, number two is everybody else. So they're there, but they're, you know, they're kind of irrelevant, right? Their, mm -hmm. their opinions aren't really, you know, not, not too involved in your life. So that's, that's everybody else. And then number three is a mythological creature. So if you find one, they usually, they usually come in packs. So you got to catch on to them. So they're unicorn. We call them unicorns. Yeah. So a unicorn is a person that's going to, you know, see the full potential in you. They're not going to give you the answers that you always want to hear. And they're going to push you to that, that next level. So um, I found once I found a unicorn in my life that all of a sudden you, you attract more unicorns and, and you, you create a herd and a pack. Um, yeah. You know, you could say it like a wolf pack from uh, the hangover, but um, <laughs> when you, I, I, I quickly identify people in my life um, to see what kind of like, not expectations out of them, but what you can kind of, what you can kind of expect because mm -hmm. you, you can't expect that push from friends and family that, don't want to see you fail. So when you say something that's putting every single thing on the line, right? Like I always say, you know, I risk it all, all the time because my mom loves me and I can live in her basement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why, why not risk it all? She's a good cook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but if I had a wife and kids, I might not be able to say that to my wife because she's going to be like, no, we're not living at your mom's house. And, you know, but your unicorn would say, hell yeah. Cause they're going to support you if something goes wrong as well. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it's, my it's funny. I ran into mm. uh, that kind of a situation uh, earlier last year when we decided to just sell our house, sell everything, move to Costa Rica. Like every, almost, almost every single person, I was like, yeah, this is the plan. This is what we're doing. Almost every single person was like, oh, cool. Awesome. That sounds great. And I'm like, like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for somebody to be like, oh, that's crazy. What the hell are you doing? And almost every single person. And then the more I went through that, I was like, oh, I'm surrounded by the right people. Like yeah. the people who are just like, fuck yeah, do it. Like, that sounds great. Yeah. You know, I'm like, mm. amazing. Obviously I'm doing something right. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by stellar people, you know? Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, it's, it's an amazing feeling to have that when you can go to different, you're not always going to that one channel. Right. And at, at the beginning of your entrepreneurship, I know you guys went through it, but it was that one person or that one group that you could only talk to about it. As it develops, you realize that, you know, you're not alone right there's there's yeah. tons of there's tons of people like that out there that are going to be that supportive and gonna also trust you for what you um what your goals are and like you know you want to live in costa rica that's that's awesome yeah. so like maybe it's not for me or maybe i'm envious or maybe that sparks something in my life and i'm coming to see you yeah. now i know i just got a place to stay that's great you sure do <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, so, um, you know, sort of staying on that topic, but shifting a little bit, uh, personally, I found in my, uh, personal life and professional life that, uh, the more that I've driven myself towards going back to being in service of other people towards charitable service, I've, I've found myself in this, this, you know, unlock this world of all of these uh, thoughtful, capable, positive, intelligent, driven, motivated, uh, encouraging people uh, who are all doing that same kind of thing. So it's it's almost like I've, I've you know, not that this was the 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 catalyst for that at all, but once I started giving myself and giving my time and and money and resources to charitable causes and and initiatives, I found myself surrounded by even more incredible people than I was before because 
that's kind of where they are, you know, and, and I know that, um, uh, charitable servitude, uh, is, is really a, a, a cornerstone for you personally and for your business. Can you talk a little bit about how, how you got into that at first, what you noticed there, and then how you've seen that just come back to you tenfold, uh, with the positivity? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, they, um, there's tons of talk about, you know, one person can't make a difference. Um, and, uh, I think it's the, for me, it's facilitating it. I'm facilitating everybody that they can make a difference alone. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest driving factors for us as a business. I'm not the one creating, like, I'm not, I'm not donating all this food. I'm not donating all these coats. We have our coat drive, we have 515 coats and that's just coats, not hats, scarves, everything else. And it, I didn't donate that, but I was able to facilitate it. And I think that's been the biggest driving force of like realizing what the community is capable of. Um, and also like, you, you know, you start where you live and you start for your people. And like, yeah, you know, I heard um, a really good chat online from uh, the home service millionaire and uh, it was, it's a podcast and he talks about, yes, it's great to serve your community, but you also as a business owner need to service your staff mm -hmm. and make sure that your, your staff are supported and your staff are, are good. And I think that's a really good point um, because it's an interesting factor from being a business owner and also being an entrepreneur taking, you know, Gary Vee talks about it a lot, but taking like almost like you should be doing your nice kind services in silence and not promoting it or not letting people know about it or whatever. And I, I agree with Gary Vee goes, listen, don't overthink caring. Mm -hmm. like, don't overthink gratitude. Right. Um, because yeah, we, we sponsor things and we give back things and stuff like that. And I mean, um, we've got some really big aspirations for what we can do as a business, but at mm -hmm. the same time, the aspiration is there to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And financially, like I remember dealing with the, um, at the beginning of COVID, I was like, how do we, I don't have any money, right? We, we potentially might have to close the business. Um, how can I give back without like dropping this, this company off, right? Or without finances. So we looked at initiatives that didn't cost people much money um, and, and, and everybody could be involved, whether you've got, you know, little money or a lot of money. So the food drive was awesome. We, we offered up, um, you know, pick up, I picked up a can of, can of corn. It didn't matter. Right. So allowing people that didn't have all these extra finances or money sitting around to be, be a part of something and really feel like they were making an impact because they were, um, mm -hmm. which was, which was an amazing opportunity for us as a business and, and me personally, for sure. But yeah, facilitating has been the biggest impact for us and, and continuing to facilitate. Um, mm -hmm. We're not the ones, you know, we're, again, we're a new business. We don't, we don't have a lot of extra viable cash. We're not going to be able to make a $50,000 charitable donation anytime soon. So it needs to go back into the business so that we can continue to support. Um, but we'll definitely be facilitating as much as we can. And there's costs associated with it. But I mean, in business for me, for sure, like I remember, you know, I didn't come from, from money or anything like that. So I always had material objects were important to me when I first started in business. Um, and as you grow and you, 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 you know, you finally can afford those material objects and you realize that like kind of the, the journey is more fun than the destination. Mm -hmm. Um, there's nothing better than giving back and giving back where you live is, is, uh, you can talk about it or, you know, you can fluff it up, but there truly is no better feeling. There's, it's just, yeah, you can buy you can buy a Gucci belt, you can buy a pair of shoes. It doesn't matter. There's 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 no better feeling. But I think from a business owner standpoint as well, like if you can't afford that, those those finer things in life, and those are your goals, you need to hit those too. You need to mm -hmm. hit those, and you need to be able to afford them to realize what where what a feeling can be like. Um, that was definitely it for me when I was early in business. I just I couldn't afford things, so and I never could as a kid. So I I, I really wanted to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And when I got there and it, it was, you know, euphoric for a day or a week or a month or whatever it lasted for, it was like, okay, what's next? Um, and I was so fortunate to find, find community um, and realizing that, you know, without the community support, we're not in business. Mm -hmm. So everybody's a potential client and 
you know, the restaurants that we, that we do work for and, and, you know, the people that are involved and, and like some of the people that are part of these charitable donations, like it's incredible. Yeah. What, how full hearted some people are. It's, it's amazing to watch. Well, that's a, and that's a fantastic a perspective to have too. And, and especially, I mean, I mean, there's a lot to impact there with what you've just said, but I mean, on the one hand, your business to begin with in, in terms of the service you provide, like you're not providing that to someone in, in Burnaby or Victoria, like you're also, your business is local in terms of, yeah. of who you're servicing. So it's incredibly important that, yeah, you're contributing to the growth of the community and, and the prosperity of the community, because that in, in the end also does contribute to your business, but it, it contributes to to why you started a business in the community too, because you wanted to stay here, you wanted to be here. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's a, it, it's a great message. Um, and, and also that idea of process too, of, of not not the end result of, of the actual journey and of, of the work. And it's, I mean, the 2020 kind of perspective is that, you know, I used to like wearing suits every day and then I went to wearing sweatpants nearly every day. Um, and I realized that, you know, <laughs> it really didn't matter what the hell I was wearing. It's yeah. It's the work that you're doing and, and you feel hungry to do that work. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, commotion is like, I mean, I was, um, it's just so just such good timing, but like my business was supported through seed works at one time. And right. You know, um, like we were so, I mean, I moved on. I mean, my shop was still my two steel sheds at my, my first house. Um, mm. But yeah, like, I didn't know those places existed, like a place like Commotion and the businesses that you guys support and then allowing people to connect. And even something like this is just, it's um, you realize that there's a bigger community than you think. Yeah. And when you, um, I remember when I finished high school and I went to, uh, you know, you get those conversations where like, Oh, after high school, you really know who your friends are. And my, my circle's so tight. Like, mm -hmm. I can like happily say I have a massive circle of hmm. phenomenal people in all different aspects of my life, whether it's, you know, business owners to just genuinely great friends to city leaders to, you know, community activists. It doesn't matter. I get yeah. There's, yeah, there's tons. And yeah. when I see them, it's like, yeah, you know, you want to hug them, right? Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the but, worst. But you don't cold. right now. I'm the yeah. I'm the, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the absolute worst COVID person because I'm such a like. I mean, I love connecting with people, so it's been really yeah. I can't I can't hug you. Like I want to yeah, give you I a know. hug. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. So I think like to your guys' points, like being involved in the community, and I think at scale too. Like one of the things that I hear a lot when we talk about corporate. Um, like I have nothing wrong with corporate, right? And like we want to get to a point where we're we're a large, large community um, business. And I think the big thing is like, you know, whether you have seventeen locations, just like whatever location is in that community, give back to that community, right? And I think that's a it's a huge um, point to get across, which is like these big corp, like we're 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 um, part of some large organizations too, and like they all do so much for the community. Um, so I don't want to take away from like an RBC or, um, mm -hmm. you know, first for Ontario or, or, you know, some of these bigger corporations, some of these investment mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I think they're just doing such a great job. And those are the ones that are able to give the financial, you know, um, financial donations. And, you know, it's just, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, uh, so I want to be uh, considerate of your time. We're we're coming yeah. up uh, to uh, I guess two p.m. Eastern. Uh, so we've we've discussed a lot. We really appreciate your time. Uh, a, a few of the sort of primary takeaways that uh, that I got here, and, and I'll, I'll um, pass it over to Ryan as well for his um, number one. I, I, I just love how succinct. Uh, this this sentiment was of it's not happening to me it's happening for me and just changing that perspective of um, you know going from feeling like a victim of something and and working your way to figure out um, how this challenge not not stressfulness but how this challenge is uh, is presented in front of you and it's you know 
whether you believe in you know some woo woo stuff or not, if you have the perspective that this was meant to be a challenge for you, then you're going to approach it from that standpoint and you're going to turn it into a positive thing. So if it's not happening to me, it's happening for me is a really beautiful, succinct way to put that. Love yeah. that. Um, one of the other points, uh, and then I'll, t- I'll pass it over to Ryan, uh, that I took away uh, was that uh, if you are challenged or struggling, or if you feel lost, or if you know, you're not sure if you're off, or you're not sure you know, what to do, um, uh, pouring yourself into to servitude in, in the community uh, is a great way to find alignment and purpose and, and build yourself back up. So, you know, a lot of people may look at, uh, you know, charitable initiatives and causes as, oh, well, that's something that I have to give to somebody else. That's, you know, that's more that I have to put in, or I don't have a lot of money or whatever this is. Um, where in reality, you know, it, it's, it's a recharge for yourself. You, you know, you're, you're all of a sudden surrounded by all these wonderful, beautiful, benevolent people, uh, and, and they're building you up and you're building them up. And it's a, it's a positive echo chamber of, uh, of community support. Um, and I, I love that takeaway right now. And being that we're, we are focusing uh, sort of more on mental health and mental health awareness right now, I think that's a really important tactic uh, to, uh, to relay to our, our listeners uh, for anybody that needs that. Uh, Ryan, did you have uh, any takeaways in particular that really resonated with you? Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're not terribly different from, from the ones you had, but um, I, like, I think to take the tech of, um, I keep saying tech, I don't know, it's my word of the day. Uh, <laughs> but, but to take a yeah, cue from you, it, the comment about um, like, it's not happening to you. It's also the idea of um, it's not about you or rarely ever is it, is it about you. Um, but you can, you can still take ownership of situations. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if, if something bad or negative is happening often, and especially I mean, given this year of, of wild conspiracy theories, um, you know, rarely is it ever so simple as that. It, it's usually has nothing to do with you or, or nothing to do with like an actual concentrated identity. It's just, everyone's kind of just struggling to do their own thing. So it, it's that idea of focusing on how do you do your own thing? And really tied to that too. I mean, you're, you're very positive about 2020 and I think you're, you're, you might be in a smaller camp there. Um, but I think with that, you're not, you're not in a wrong camp. I think it's the idea of that idea of presence. And uh, someone I was talking to back towards the end of 2020, I, you know, I had some challenges myself in 2020, but it, it became the point of like 2020 is very true to its name of being clarity um, of having that focus and so it's about how you treat uh kind of challenging years or challenging times and the good that you can drive out of them so i'd say i mean that that idea of positivity about 2020 of like why why let 2020 win like no think about what you got out of it think about how and where you were present in it and how do you you come out from there and in in terms of a better world yeah yeah dan brother (laughs) this was great thank you so much uh, My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, Parting thanks, words, if, if, you, if you have anything. Yeah, you know what? I just wanted to touch on Ryan's last point. Um, we always say on, on our podcast, why not me? Why not now? Um, but a big takeaway as well is, is if you didn't, don't come down to someone's level. Okay? So if you're having a good time, don't be afraid to say it. Um, if you're having a tough time, don't be afraid to say it. But mm-hmm. um, just be true to yourself and, and, and speak from the heart and be open and honest about some of the challenges you're having. And if you're having a great day, fuck 2020, let it, let it, yeah. 2020 was great. <laughs> you know, I remember it when, when things, when I, when I started turning things around, I felt terrible saying it, mm-hmm. right. Cause everyone was so negative. And then I started, why am I limiting my actual, why am I not being true to myself? Why am I limiting my feelings? Just cause this guy's having a bad day. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And whether it's 2020 or 2040, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. But yeah, just, uh, you know, if, if you think it's bad, ask yourself the question verbally to yourself out loud and then say, what, what am I grateful for today? And I think you yeah. can find a lot of peace and gratitude. And um, from, the, from two great entrepreneurs in, in such an awesome city, I, I, I just want to say thanks for having me on. I was... Uh, pleasantly surprised to be asked and, and uh, I feel very grateful for the two of you and, and 
I have lots of takeaways from today. So thanks so much for having yeah. me on. Yeah, likewise. Great. Thanks very much for being on, Dan. Cheers. Yeah. All right. All right. Until next time. Uh, Until next have, time. Uh, yeah, we have uh, new guests lined up coming up soon in this new podcast vlog format. We're excited to bring that to you and uh, bring you more good content. And uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, see ya. Take care.